Good morning, everyone. My name is Michelle Skierman, and I will be your MC for today's news conference. We want to thank you very much for joining us for today's important announcement regarding a free online suicide prevention training program available to middle and high school staff and students throughout the state. So we have with us today a number of guests who are going to speak about the importance of the program, the funding and legislation that made today's announcement possible, and how it will be rolled out across the state. We'll also hear from a student who has taken the START program and why this online training comes at such a critical time for students. So I'd like to introduce our guests today in the order that they will speak. First off, we have Mark Berman, the California State Assembly member for the 24th District. Tony Thurmond, California State Superintendent of Public Instruction. Dr. Paul Gothold, the San Diego County Superintendent of Schools. Rick Trim, the President of Living Works. And Sin Gomez, a high school senior and NAMI representative at Sierra Vista High School. So just a couple of housekeeping rules before we jump into things. We're going to ask everyone to please mute your microphone. Also, we're recording today's news conference, so you will be able to view it on replay. And all journalists are invited to ask questions via the chat room today. We'd like you to identify your name, your news organization, and who the question is intended for. And also, we're going to be emailing out a full news release once the virtual news conference is over. So with that, we're going to start things off and I'm going to hand the microphone off to assembly member, Mark Berman. Great, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to join in this announcement and really wanna thank my friend, State Superintendent Thurman, the San Diego County Office of Education and Living Works for launching the free voluntary online suicide prevention training program envisioned in Assembly Bill 1808. The issue of suicide prevention and youth mental health hits very close to home for me. I grew up in and served on the city council of Palo Alto, a city full of high achievers and high expectations. Tragically, my hometown also has high youth suicide rates and has struggled through two youth suicide clusters in the last 11 years. Six young people died in 2009, uh, in 2009 2010, and four died in 2014, 2015 when I was on the city council. Unfortunately, Palo Alto is not alone in experiencing these tragedies. Soon after I was first elected to the California State Assembly in 2016, I learned about another youth suicide cluster. Three students from the same school district in the Central Valley had taken their own lives over a three month period. Youth mental health and, suicide and suicidal ideation don't discriminate between races, genders, geographic location, or socioeconomic status. Every community and every school district across California is struggling with these issues, and we need a statewide strategy to try to address it. This led to one of my proudest moments as a member of the California legislature, successfully securing $1.7 million in Assembly Bill 1808 to provide online suicide prevention training to schools throughout California for free. Suicide is preventable, but training is essential. As youth spend a significant amount of their lives in school, the adults who interact with them on a daily basis, both teachers and administrators, are in a prime position to recognize the warning signs of suicidal thoughts and make the appropriate referrals for help. And we need to equip our students, who often confide in each other before talking to adults, with the skills and confidence to intervene when they see a friend or peer who is struggling. I'm even more thankful that the training program is being launched across California during this challenging and unprecedented time. As students cope with school closures and isolation, it's absolutely critical that administrators, teachers, and students have the knowledge, tools, and resources to know what to look for and how to respond to students who need help. I'm hopeful that all schools take advantage of this free online training and that this one-time funding will lead to a more permanent investment to ensure the safety and well-being of our youth. Thanks. Thank you very much, Assemblymember Berman. Uh, we are going to move on now to Dr. Paul Gothold, the San Diego County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you, uh, Assemblymember Berman, and to Living Work Start for, for your support, leadership around this uh, critical and important initiative. Um, 
as mentioned, you know, we have our own experiences and in our own schools, we have uh, tragically in the last couple of months uh, lost two of our children to, to suicide. So we know firsthand <clears throat> the, uh, the urgent need uh, for this work uh, across the state. And um, now more than ever, uh, we just have to build on our, our students and school and employees mental health literacy like never before. Um, the pandemic has added a huge amount of stress on our families. But even before the pandemic, uh, as you know, many of our students struggled with suicide ideation. That's why the San Diego County Office of Education uh, jumped at the chance to support our fellow county offices of ed in rolling out the Living Work Start program. Uh, our two-phase rollout plan, first with school staff and then with students, ensures we equip adults with the necessary knowledge and skills to support students before they are trained. And, and training kids is, is such a powerful thing. Um, our students across the state have told us loud and clear they want information on mental health and on suicide prevention. Giving middle and high school students this access honors their mental health advocacy efforts. And I am so proud of the way that San Diego County Office of Ed team is working with other county offices uh, to get this resource out. And um, it should be noted that this is not a, a one size fits all mandate. Uh, each county office will roll this out in their own way, honoring the expertise, resources, and needs of each community. But this is a great example of the way county offices support our schools, our districts, our students, and our communities. Uh, together, we, we can address suicide, which is the leading cause of death for youth ages 10 to 24, and build our community skill and resilience by doing whatever it takes to support our students and families. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gothold. Now we'll move on to Rick Trimp, the president of Living Works. Good morning, everyone, and, and thank you for your leadership in this regard and uh, for the speaker's comments uh, about the importance of this issue in saving children's lives from suicide. Here at Living Works, our, our mission is to save lives from suicide. We do that by empowering communities uh, to work together and to keep others safe. Suicide prevention has been our sole focus for over 35 years. And in that time, we've worked with thousands of organizations and communities around the world. These include our educational institutions, our militaries, and several thousand other organizations. We provide our partners with consultation, expertise, and full service training. We are honored to be working with the California Department of Education, the San Diego County Office of Education, to be implementing this Assembly Bill 1808. This is an essential initiative at a very important time. The pandemic has really heightened uh, the urgency for, for this action. And I wanna commend the leadership uh, that has taken a, a significant role in making sure that this happens. What's particularly valuable about the approach that they are taking is that it, it gives everyone a role to play in the prevention of suicide. We can't have healthcare professionals at every corner, but we can empower administration. We can empower teachers, staff, and students to come together and to create a network of safety or a safety net within their own communities. The Living Work Start program is designed to do exactly that. It empowers people to recognize when someone is struggling. It gives them the confidence to ask that person directly and takes meaningful steps to connect them to help. Like all Living Works programs, Living Works Start is an evidence-based program and has been effectively tested for those as young as 13 years old. We believe this will make a life-saving difference for students across California, and we, we are eager to work with other schools and organizations around the world to bring similar safety measures. We look forward to providing our full service and support to this very important initiative and are honored to work with the state of California in implementing this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rick. Next is Sin Gomez. Sin is a high school senior and a NAMI representative at Sierra Vista High School. Hi, everyone. My name is, as they said, Sin Gomez. I'm 17 years old. My pronouns are they, them. I hope to attend UC Berkeley this fall as a social welfare and legal studies major. And as they previously mentioned, I am a graduate of Sierra Vista High School and I'm proud to represent my community. Uh, firstly, one of the questions that are, is on everyone's mind is why is mental health important to young people? And I think that I can provide the avenue of 
explanation. So in the digital age, it's very easy to isolate, self-isolate and to find an avenue of support through social media or online support. So if living works, living works can be imp implemented into this level of one-on-one -on -one peer support, it's gonna be crucial to moving forward. And as I said, there is a growing reliance on unhealthy coping mechanism that has been popularized through film, social media, and music. Um, I also have a couple other notes. COVID completely hindered the students' essential years of growth and development and connection with their peers. So now more than ever, we need resources to help these students bounce back from such an uncertain time. Mental health issues like suicide ideation, depression and anxiety are on an all time high and continue to rise in our generation. So now more than ever, there needs to be support for this young generation. And I can tell you from my personal experience that there is quote unquote flex culture or resume flexing that is developing unhealthy coping mechanism and unhealthy obsessions. Um, these can spiral into mental health issues because students are comparing themselves to each other like never before. And lastly, our generation is looking for guidance and support in an unprecedented time where we're entering an unstable uh, economy, dealing with the constant fight for inequality with black and brown students and black and brown citizens across the country. So you're constantly being exposed to the hardship that everyone is going through. If we can provide something that allows them to step away and realize that there are unhealthy coping mechanisms and ways to help each other, that is gonna be a game changer. And as everyone has been mentioning, COVID is, hinder is hindering the, a usually stable and predictable high school experience. I can speak for my senior year, much changed in the span of three months, and it's hard to adapt. So if we can have teachers that are able to help and students that are able to reach out to one another with not only support, but ways to further and better each other's mental health, it's gonna be the best thing that we can do for one another. And I was lucky enough to take the Living Work Start experience. So the positives that come with this program that they're gonna be implementing is that it's interactive and it allows for there to be an understanding of the participants when you're building your profile. And throughout the training, it allows you to receive um, not only strategies, but when to use them. So it allows you to distinguish when someone is simply having a hard day or someone is struggling very deeply with their mental health. As well as it allows different ways to communicate in a very modern and digitized life that we are in. You're allowed to do face-to-face -face trainings as well as text trainings. So that allows for different avenues of support. And lastly, the TASK acronym. If there's one thing I can highlight from this program, it's the TASK acronym. It stands for tuning in, asking, stating, and connecting. I know it's something that I'm personally gonna use in my daily life as I support my peers. And I hope that this is one thing that can be shared with every school district in every state because it's a good place to start. And one thing that I'm looking forward to with the launch of the program is that it's going to be adapting and changing to the young people's varying situations and symptoms. Because although you learn the necessary skills to help those with suicidal ideation, it's hard to see students that represent me in different situations right now in the training. I'm super excited to see what comes next and what new situations they're gonna be implementing to the program. And in addition to this, there are a multitude of skills that staff and students can learn from this program. It allows them to learn the signs, symptoms, and mannerisms of people struggling with their mental illness. And it helps destigmatize suicide and humanize the experience. Um, because at times suicide within my young generation is either greatly in fashion and on trend with um, speaking portions or like common dialogue that glamorizes suicide. And then there's also other times where it's highly taboo. So by humanizing the experience, we get to move forward in a huge way. And lucky for me, I've had the privilege to announce a virtual summit that's going to be coming this September. On September 15th, they're going to be bringing students, teachers, school staff together to build awareness about the reliance, resilience, and mental health and suicide prevention. And this program, as stated, is going to be 
uh, offered to middle and high school students. So I myself am going to be super excited to tune into this program. And I hope that everyone else can make sure to mark their calendars too. And before I go, I'm sorry I had to speak very quickly. There's so much I had to say, and I wish there was more time I could say it, but I'll leave you guys with this. In 2008, Barack Obama said, change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. And his quote applies beautifully to mental health resources. Generations before mine have brushed mental health aside, but my generation is trying to bring it to the forefront and bring it to to have productive change. Everyone on this call and everyone watching, you and I, we can be the change and we will be the change because your struggle is valid, my struggle is valid, your story matters, and you deserve what you need to be okay and thrive. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Sin. And lastly, we're going to have Tony Thurmond, the California State Superintendent of Public Instruction. Tony won't be able to stay for questions, but um, we are going to hand the microphone over to him now. Michelle, thank you. You know, uh, I want to acknowledge Sin for those really incredible comments. You know, one of my um, mentors once said that when someone says a great thing, you just say something like, I like to align myself with the remarks of my distinguished colleagues. Sin, I, I like to align myself with the remarks of you, my distinguished colleague. I'm a social worker. I've worked at UC Berkeley, um, and I would be honored to welcome you to the profession uh, of, of social work and social welfare. I think you articulated how important it is for us to really talk about mental health uh, in this country. The reality is, is that millions of Americans um, have mental health needs and many millions of Americans are able to live successfully with support. And that if we talk openly and we remove stigma, that we can be supportive um, to millions of Americans, to young people, um, to family members. And uh, this is something that's important for all of us. You're a fantastic spokesperson for NAMI. I thank you for role modeling, uh, tuning in, asking, stating, and connecting and and for the invitation to the virtual summit on september the 15th and i would like to invite you and others to consider joining a, a virtual conversation tomorrow um, if you you know if you'd like to join in on behalf of dami or any other organizations um, tomorrow uh, we'll be hosting a virtual conversation uh, with student leaders and students talking about their feelings as it relates to the graphic and grave police brutality that has impacted so many, acts of race and racism that no doubt um, have caused many feelings, including trauma, uh, from seeing such explicit and difficult actions taking place. And I believe that um, the same audience that this training is really intended to serve could benefit from this conversation tomorrow. Um, it is really focused on giving middle school and high school students a chance um, to express their feelings and to give ideas on how to make the world better as it relates to, to racial justice and to get support. And it just strikes me that we would be, uh, we would benefit from being able to work with partners like NAMI and in particular student leaders like yourself who could uh, articulate a message better uh, than I could um, to young people who may be tuning in. So thank you, Sin and NAMI uh, for your work. Um, thank you, uh, Living Works for Living Works Start. We're looking forward to working more closely with you uh, on how the program rolls out. Um, we want to join with you in questions about how to generate more funding to make this a more ongoing training opportunity um, to make ongoing support uh, for our students. I want to thank uh, Superintendent Gothall uh, from San Diego County Office of Education for always stepping up in unique ways to support our students, for being such a great partner for us at the California Department of Education, and for your work to really roll this out and implement this program. And I especially want to thank my friend and colleague, Assemblymember Mark Berman, for your leadership and your authorship of AB 1808. And I'm sitting here thinking, when you first came with this concept, who would have known that we would be in a place where the only way that mental health services could be delivered would be by telehealth and virtually? 
who could have known uh, that this would be the case? We didn't know, but, but you knew that it was important for us to recognize that mental health was a challenge then, and it has been exacerbated by, by COVID-19, by the pandemic. It has been exacerbated by acts of racism that have literally played themselves out on our televisions and on social media, and that these events have an impact on our young people. I'm grateful for you, Assemblymember Berman, because it wasn't easy to get this bill passed. And like our young people, you persevered. And I think that's a message that's important for us to share with our young people that challenges will come forward and, and they should persevere. But it's our job to make sure that they're not persevering alone, that they have someone who can listen, that they have someone who can support. And when I look back on all the obstacles that I've had to overcome in my own life, I've always had a caring adult that could help me navigate my way. I've always had peers, friends, peers who believed in me and listened to me, who did all the things that the TAS um, acronym really is about. People like Sin, who said, hey, your life will be better than it started and just believe in yourself. And so on behalf of our staff on the California Department of Education, I'm proud um, to speak to our partnership uh, with this effort and looking forward to working together to support 6 million students in our state. To make it an ongoing effort. Um, and I do wanna invite you all to join a new counseling coalition uh, that we've called for to, to specifically do what this is about. Fill gaps that exist. Many of our mental health organizations and social emotional learning groups are really struggling right now to be able to connect with the young people who depend on them the most because of the pandemic. It has literally created gaps for thousands, hundreds of thousands of students who when we moved into distance learning, not only did they feel the pressure of the pandemic and not being able to speak to their friends, they had no way to connect to school or any resources because their families were struggling for basic needs and many of those students are still disconnected. And so I'm hopeful uh, that Living Works and the assembly member and, uh, the, uh, and the superintendent and NAMI will join our coalition to help us figure out how to fill these gaps. Because when students return to school in the fall, it's gonna look very different. And it may exacerbate feelings that students have. When students return to school and we have physical distancing and social distancing and students wearing a mask, it may seem like a very strange environment for school. And, and to not be able to hug friends and high five friends when everyone's saying, don't touch anybody else's you know, hands and don't shake hands or even high five, all of those things will have an impact on all of us and especially our young people. So I'm grateful for this effort for Living Start Works and for the partnership. I'm hopeful that you all would join us in our, in our counseling coalition to fill the gaps and to continue to provide support for our six million students. But in the meantime, I'm grateful um, and I'm so thankful for today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Superintendent Thurmond. So we are going to move to questions now. As I mentioned uh, previously, journalists, you can put your questions in the chat box, uh, identifying your news organization and who the question is intended for. And we will also email out a full news release once this is over. So I've got a few questions coming in. First one for Assembly Member Berman. The funding in place for suicide prevention training is a good start. Does the legislature plan to continue the training program in the future? That, that, that's a great question, and, and that's absolutely my hope. Uh, and, and that's why, you know, it was so imp important that this program have evidence-based training. Uh, you know, a key component of the program is that it can track aggregate statewide usage uh, and can assess training knowledge before and after training in order to measure training outcomes. These are all, you know, critical data points so that I can go back to my colleagues um, once people have had the opportunity to, to use the training program and, and see how valuable it is uh, for their schools and their communities. And then I can advocate for permanent funding that's gotten a little more difficult based on uh, the current economic situation across the state. But I'm confident that all of my colleagues prioritize uh, mental health and especially youth mental health, especially during these uh, you know, COVID-19 times, like so many people spoke so eloquently to. Um, so I think that we set ourselves up as long, but now 
we need schools and school districts and teachers and administrators and students to use the program uh, and, and show how valuable it is. And so I'm confident that, uh, you know, if, if a lot of schools uh, and a lot of teachers and administrators and students participate in the training um, and, and, you know, give that feedback that's so critical to, to me to be able to advocate that I can then turn to my colleagues and advocate for why it's so important for this to be permanent so that new teachers and new students and new administrators in future years also have the opportunity to, to, to get this great training and be you know, such a critical uh, gatekeeper for our youth in our communities. So um, it's, it's a little too early to tell whether or not we'll be successful, but it's absolutely my intention to do everything I can to make this a, a permanent part of our, our schools and, and a permanent kind of tool um, as we try to confront youth mental health issues in our communities. Thank you for that. Uh, question now for Rick Trimp of Living Works. Can you tell us um, about some feedback and results of the Living Works Start program so far? Absolutely, we've, we've received a significant amount of feedback as we've rolled out Living Works Start uh, from a number of different sectors. And as it relates specifically to, to schools and educational organizations, they found Living Works Start to be a, a uh, a uh, useful tool immediately uh, for students, for staff, for teachers uh, to be able to speak openly about, about the issue of suicide and to be able to have the skills to, uh, to be able to address those that are in need and to be able to identify those individuals. So we, we, we received overwhelming uh, response, um, very similar to what, uh, you know, the eloquent words that Sen was relaying. Uh, so we've, we've heard that. Um, now for for months and we're very excited about this opportunity in San Diego, in california thank you rick this question was intended for state superintendent thurmond but i'm wondering if dr gothold might be willing to address it the question is how critical are partnerships between leas and mental health organizations regarding services and support for students they are absolutely critical you know we we can't do this alone and as Superintendent Thurman had so eloquently stated around, uh, you know, the need to address the gaps. Um, keep in mind that it, it's, this is, uh, we're in a, in a climate right now where um, we need to plug in services for our adults as well. Um, you know, we have colleagues and people I work with on a day-to-day -day basis that are in pain, trying to help their own kids in their 20s and 30s navigate some of the issues. But we, we have to rely on our partnerships. You know, this is one of the things that we uh, activated immediately when we went into distance learning was that um, we were going to have to pay attention to the social emotional needs of our families. The economic strain, the um, lack of, of internet access in some homes and, and, and doing site uh, home visits, doing check-ins. In fact, part of, our, part of our program was to activate any of our partnerships that had the, the ability to, to reach our kids uh, telephonically or, or through online. Where were those other places that we could not? Um, we, we cannot rely on doing this ourselves. And, and, it, and it transcends to all of our basic needs. We rely on food banks to help support our, our, our kids who are, are suffering from, uh, from, from lack of, of, of food at home and everything else. So for us, um, we see schools as, as, as really a community resource where social work, where mental health, uh, food, uh, internet access, anything that we can do to provide those necessary uh, means and, and needs is, is critical for us. Um, we don't have the expertise in all of those areas. We fully rely on our partnerships to do that. Each year we expand the number of community-based organizations that are working with our schools and, and, and there's still a need. So, um, you know, as, as the assemblymen worked through uh, pushing this through, uh, you know, our legislature, it gave us a great hope that, that number one, that there's a priority for this. And number two, we can take away some of the excuses and, and a lot of times that's cost. So we just look forward to expanding on this and strengthening our relationships with our, with our, uh, our partners who support our kids in these very important efforts. Thank you, Dr. Gothold. One more question uh, for Rick Trimp. Can you tell us a little bit more about the Virtual Youth Summit? Thank you, Michelle. 
we're very excited about this. Uh, September 15th is our virtual summit. And the, uh, the intention is really to, to start speaking about suicide and start speaking about the issue, uh, address the stigma. And we have, uh, we have a very exciting lineup of, of acts. And uh, I, think, I think it'll be, it'll be a, a great time to actually start talking about this issue and to, to celebrate really the, uh, the leadership that's happened in the state of California uh, to get this initiative rolling. Uh, one of our, I, I need to mention, and I'm proud to mention that Sutter Health is a presenting partner with us. Uh, they're a great partner, and I think most of you are aware of Sutter Health in, in the state of California and the work that they do in the communities. And so we're very proud to, uh, to bring this together uh, with the help of our, of our partner. So September 15th, and I uh, look forward to seeing you all there. Excellent. Thank you so much, Rick. Um, so we're still uh, just going to hang on a few minutes. If there are any other questions from the media, please feel free to drop them in the chat box. Of course, you can follow up afterwards. Um, if you have some follow up questions for Superintendent Thurmond, you can contact Daniel Thigpen. Um, for San Diego County Superintendent Dr. Go Gothold, her communica his communications person, pardon me, is Music Watson. Assembly Member Berman, you can direct your questions to Caitlin Curry. And follow-up questions for Rick Trimp of Living Works can go to Owen Stockton, pardon me. So I'm just doing one last check and I think we are good to go. We're gonna uh, sign things off today just a little bit over a half an hour, so not too bad. Thank you very much everyone for taking time out of your schedule to join us today. <laughs>